everyone, it's John, and today, what we're going to be doing, you guessed it, some more network automation, this time with my two favourite tools, Nornir and Genie, so this should be a good one. So, with that said, let's kick on, let's do it. Now, when I say I'm going to be using Nornir and Genie together, to be more precise, what I'm going to be doing is using Nornir with the Genie parsers. Now, if you recall from a previous video on TextFSM to get structured data, I was using TextFSM to parse that information. In this video, I'm going to be doing the same type of thing, but in this case, I'm going to be using the Genie parsers. Now, why would I do that? Well, they're different parsing tools, okay? They do similar things, but sometimes they give slightly different output. What I was looking for was to parse interface information and it just transpired that the NTC templates weren't quite giving me what I was looking for so I moved over to the Genie templates and I must say they're absolutely amazing. The whole Genie team just knock out the park all the time to be honest so these ones are really really good so I really want to demonstrate how you can use them and it's super super simple okay. So the plan is to basically use the Genie parsers to parse the information. I'm going to show you the difference between that and the text FSM, how to actually get that data out. And then we'll build a little script at the end to do a little bit of uh, error detection. Okay, so let's just go and look at the script first. Now what I will say is that if you find some of the things which I'm doing in this video confusing, please watch my structured data with text FSM video because I'm going to be doing the same type of things but in that video I'm going to go over it a little bit more in depth. I'm going to skim over some things assuming you've seen that video, okay? So the first thing I want to show you is the debugger one. So Vim debugger and all we're going to be doing is creating a custom function. We're going to create the variable R and it's going to be doing task uh, run and use netmiko send command to send the command string show interfaces. Now originally I had used text FSM set to true. Okay, now what I'm going to be doing is using the IPDB debugger to go straight in and manipulate the objects. So let's go in and see what we get when we use text FSM. And by the way, what I will say is just quickly, topology here, if you want to look at the host file, it'll be on my GitHub anyway, but um, you can see that quickly show you that. I've got a core, core 1, distro, distro 4, access and an edge is pretty similar just so you know what's going on there. Okay so let's run the first script. Oh fucking just push python 3 and debugger for inventory. We'll just go through this and it should drop us straight into the debugger. Now before we just go into the debugger, I just want to just show you the actual output, the way it comes out. Now in the case here, we've got our keys here, like addressed and a value, bandwidth and a value. And um, we've got some things like input errors, input packets, input rate, IP address, but things like um, broadcasts, runs, they type of things were not there. And this is what I was looking to parse on, okay? So I decided what could I do differently. So that's why I decided to try out the Genie parsers. Now let's just look at this inventory briefly. And if we just remember how to do it, we can see all the hosts. And let's grab a key. So we'll look at core one, okay? And again, if you're unsure of what I'm doing here, watch that video on text FSM. So if I can do that, and remember, because of the script, we created this fact scheme, we basically saved the information to that. Now, if I actually pretty print that, do you know what? Uh, push A and pretty print it. Looks a little bit better. Okay, so we've got the keys on the outside. Uh, and the values on the inside. So what does that actually mean? Up. Oh, I shouldn't have done that, should have. There we go. So, if you remember, when we're dealing with text FSM, to get the first uh, value, we could do the zero here, and that would give us the first interface, okay? Interface gigabit zero zero, you can see that here. And if we moved up one, it would give you the values for gigabit zero one, and gigabit Zero to just gradually incrementing. I'm going to just show you that just because remember, rather than do zero one two to increment when we're using the genie ones, it's going to be slightly different. You actually need to specify the interface. So that's the first difference. So let's go back out of this and we're going to edit this script and use the genie parsers this time, okay? So all you need to do, it's so so difficult I must say, you just simply change this to use genie. So we're effectively going to be running the show interfaces command and then using genie 
to parse out the information, saving the inf the result, our dot result, to the key facts, and that's how we'll find it, okay? So let's go and run, uh, oh, actually, how about I don't do that, John Boy? Try to exit out a vim there and put in a colon, just take that off. That's us. Okay, so let's try it now with the genie parsers. Right, so let's do Python 3 debugger. And now we're going to actually be parsing it with a uh, genie instead, so the output's going to look a little bit different, it'll be structured differently, okay? So genie will grab all this and then we'll drop into our debugger so we can actually manipulate the objects. Okay, so we're now dropped into the debugger, but I just want to quickly show you the difference you can just see here. You can see the way it's being structured looks differently. So instead, the outside key is actually the interface, and we've got keys like counters, and now we've got like broadcast packets, uh, giants, uh, runts. We've got all these things. That's a little bit more detailed, and this is what I was trying to find that the text FSM was not quite giving me, hence the change. So let's just briefly look at how we can handle this data so we can construct a script. So again, just the same, we'll do uh, inventory, uh, hosts, and we can see our, oh, if I can spell inventory right. And we'll just pick the same host, we'll just do it with uh, core one. And let's just go into facts, remember that's where we saved the output of the command to. So we're gonna get this, this looks a little bit unstructured, but if we just pretty print it, and we'll just do that. We're going to see we've got it this way. And like I say, the keys this time, rather than if I try to put in the key um, zero, like I did with text FSM to get the first interface, we're going to get an error. Okay, what I need to do is actually type in the interface name. Because that's the outside key. So gigabit ethernet. And we'll look at um, zero one, okay. Oh, how about I put the... In. Okay, so that's Gigabit 01's information passed on Core 1, okay? Now the outside key, what I want to be doing is drilling into, say, broadcast packets and, like I say, giants, these type of things. So the outside key you need to do is counters. So I go here and I put in counters. We're going to just see all the counters. And let's say I just wanted the broadcast packet value. I could just put in... Um, in underscore broadcast p fucking type pkts. Now we get the actual value of the broadcast on this interface. Okay, so the thing is, because this looks a little bit different, ordinarily, if you remember the text FSM, we could iterate through this quite simply just by using a simple loop and going zero one two three four blah de blah because. The way to iterate through it was a numerical value. This time we actually need to iterate through it by specifying the interface. So the actual loop is going to look a little bit different, okay? Now, remember from the previous video, when we're actually in the script, we can actually replace all this part with task.host. Now, remember that, rather than, not the pretty print, just this bit here. This bit can be changed to task.host. So when you see that in the script, just remember that's what I'm doing here. Now, like I say, this is the part we're going to have to deal with because how are we going to iterate through all the interfaces? So I want to get into here and then I want for maybe two and if I want for maybe one zero. So I mean these are all different values and I can't just do one, two, three, four, five, six. What I need to do is have it be gigabit zero one, gigabit zero two, gigabit one zero, gigabit one two type of thing, okay? So let's just look at that. How are we going to solve that problem? Now, real quick, the purpose of this script is to use Genie to parse out interface statistics to actually detect the presence of broadcasts or a high volume of broadcasts on a particular interface. If we see over a certain threshold, we're going to assume that there is a potential for a broadcast storm and we're going to locate exactly which part of the network uh, these interfaces are affected. So let's look at the script. Now all this part will look familiar, it's just your basic um, imports. We have everything this, Everything effectively is the same here, apart from we're now using Genie rather than using TextFSM. 
we've got the variable r and we're using the dot result attribute to save the value of this um, output to the key facts okay now this is when it looks a little bit different we've got a nested loop here and the reason why we've got the nested loop is so we can access those different keys those interface keys rather than just doing 0 1 2 3 4 5 what we need to do is do gigabit 1 0 1 2 1 3 2 1 2 0 so we need to have these possible combinations and this nested loop is going to get that for us so we're going to say create a variable called broadcast value and like i said nr.inventory.host can be replaced with task.host okay task is coming from the argument here in the function and it's just going to grab the value for every interface okay the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a mathematical comparison i've just gave it this arbitrary value of 5000 to say that if we see over 5000 broadcast packets on a Interface, we're going to assume there's a potential for a storm that's too high for us. You can set this to whatever value you see fit, okay? I'm just doing it for an example here. But because we're doing a mathematical comparison, we actually need to convert this value, the broadcast packets, to an integer, okay? And that's what we're doing here. Then we're saying potential broadcast storm on, and then list the IP address, and then the interface, okay? So that's basically what's going to happen. And let's just examine this little loop so you can maybe better understand what's going on here. So let's go back, just save this. And if I open up PyCharm. And just before we pull up PyCharm, let's look at the actual interface layout. Just so we know what we're targeting. So if I do a show IP int brief, we're going to see the layout which I've got are 00, 01, 02, 03 all the way down to 2, 3. So that's effectively the scope I'm trying to be iterating through. I want to be going through these interfaces. Perhaps yours is different. Yours might be FA01 straight to FA018. Mine's is not, okay? So I'm going to have to make mine go through these to match the actual interface keys. So let's look at that loop then. Here's the nested loop. Now, we've got this nested loop, the I at the top and the J within it. The I value will be the value on the left, the module number. So this one here, if I can highlight that, or oh, can't actually. <laughs> um, and the J value is the one on the right. Okay, that's going to be the port number. So if I just ran this and I change this to maybe say four, we're going to see the value on the left is going to go up to three now. Okay, remember it's one less in Python. So if we run that, see that? So our modules now go up to three. And because this one goes 0 to 6, the one that it goes up to 5, okay? See that? So if I change this to maybe gig 0, uh, what I'm actually trying to do, actually, I'm trying to get to 2. So my top one has to be 3. And what's my inside one goes to 3. So I want that to be 4, okay? If I change this to 4, and I run this now, there we go. We're actually getting the right values. So if we actually use this script here the way it is, we can actually iterate and parse out those keys, those interface keys, and that should be a capital G actually. And now we can actually correctly get those keys at gigabit 01, 02, 03, 1011, and we can just parse through and run through all those um, genie values, okay? So what have I got here now? Now, because I don't actually have physical equipment, it's kind of difficult to get a proper simulation on interface errors. So what I'm going to do is, like I say, it's difficult to get CRC errors and whatnot, things which you can get problems with actual bad cabling. What I'm going to do to get my errors is just going to create a broadcast storm. So let's just put these three on just now. I don't want to break the whole network because my EVNG will crash if I allow this just to get too big. I'm just going to do it as a no spanning tree VLAN 1. And on switch 4, same again, no spanning tree VLAN 1. And the third one, once I put this, which is now start getting broadcasts going through the network, looping round, no spanning tree VLAN 1. Okay, now what should happen is, because we don't have any control on our spanning tree, we're just going to get this broadcast just looping round and looping round and looping round, which will actually increment the values on the interfaces, okay? Then I'm going to turn on, or well, I'm going to put spanning tree back on to stabilise the network, but it'll leave those values on them. And then I'm going to turn on the rest of the 
devices and then we're going to detect if this script, if Genie can correctly parse out the values on these interfaces, find that they're over the threshold and locate exactly where in the network that the broadcast storm happened, okay? So this is not exactly a perfect uh, representation of real life, it's just a little way I can get round uh, the lack of physical equipment here to demonstrate using the parsers, okay? So let's just hang tight and what I'll do is I'll come back in a minute. Okay, so we're back and I've powered on all devices and I've also turned Span and Tree back on on switches 3, 4 and 7 to stop the broadcast storm. But because we had that on for a while, so if we just pull up our terminal, and the script I'm going to be deploying is called Storm Hunter. It's the exact same as the interface one, but I've just added a, a snazzy little heading, okay? <laughs> so let's go and deploy Storm Hunter to try and detect where those uh, broadcast storms are, okay? So just hit enter. Okay, so it's returned some data back, and it says that on 192.168.31.14, that's 02 interface, it's 10 interface, so let's just check that. And just go back here. So 14, so that's switch 4. So that's that one there. And it's saying it's 10 and 02. Is that what it said? 10 and 02. That's correct. It says 17 is 01 and 02. So 17 is 01 and 02, which is this one here. 02. That's correct. And 13 is. Uh, 0, 1 and 1, 0. So 13 is switch 3 is 0, 1 interface and 1, 0. So it's correctly identified switch 7's 0, 1 and 0, 2 interface. Switch 3's 0, 1 and 1, 0 interface. Switch 4's 1, 0 and 0, 2 interface. So we can actually tell that just by polling the entire network there was actually high broadcast on those interfaces and we can actually just map out that there was potential for a loop there. So what you could just simply do is, you could obviously just SSH John into one of these devices if you want to double check it and just do what one we're going to. How about 17, the access one. And if you wanted you could put on storm control or interface gigabit what? Gig zero one and you can just shut that interface down to prevent the loop from happening okay whatever you want to do okay so that's just the basic overview but like i say what you really could do with this script is again because i can't simulate it i don't want to do it too much but um if we did um storm hunter you could easily change this to detect different things like i say that's just a, a random one i picked because it's easy to simulate a broadcast storm but you could have the counters and change the key to And you could quite trivially easily just change the value of this. So rather than broadcast, let's go over to the other one here. What values we got? We could look at um, in CRC errors. We could use that key instead. I mean, just in CRC errors, whatever, and just look for certain values and whatnot. So you could actually get pretty complex with this. I mean, you could, well, not complex, but you can make it more interesting than this basic overview. You can look for late collisions, which would then maybe say a potential duplex mismatch. You could change that to, okay? You could maybe look for output drops and say a potential speed mismatch. You could have, if you look for runts rather than CRC errors, you could say maybe a half duplex is detected. If you see, you could do and, you could do um, high input errors, but if the runs are low and the input errors are high, it detects that the cable's probably faulty, so potentially check the cable on this. You can just add the whole list, make it so long, so you can detect broadcast storms, detect faulty cables, half duplex, potential speed mismatches, all easily done just by using the Genie parsers, okay? So, that's pretty much the end of the video. Like I say, it's just a basic introduction to using the Genie parsers. They're really, really good. Um, so I'll put this code up in GitHub, so if you want to try it out, check it out, download it, give it a bash and see how you do. Okie doke, so thanks very much, I'll see you guys soon.